So good evening, everyone. I would like to start off with a question for everybody in this room. So who has ever felt like the only one in a room? Please raise your hand if you've ever been the only woman in a room, or maybe the only person with a disability in a room, or if you've been the only men in a room. You can keep your hands raised. <laughs> or if you've been the only person with red hair in a room. Or have you been the only black person in a room? So those who have raised their hands, think back to that room, or think back to those rooms, and think back how you felt as the only one in that room. Did you feel very vulnerable or very insecure? Or did you feel very powerful or alone or intimidated? Think back to, that, to those rooms. And then my last question, did you adjust something about yourself to fit into that room? Did you wear something different? Did you use different words? Did you use a different voice? Did you navigate carefully to fit into that room? So thank you for participating. So I'm asking these questions to highlight how it feels to not be part of the crowd, to not be part of societal norm. So I am intimately familiar with being the only one in a room. Between the age of six and eight, I was the only black girl in my ballet class. Uh, during many holidays with my mom, who's somewhere in the audience, we were the only black family. I've been the only woman in many project teams, but I've also been the only and first black woman in a leadership team. So I know the, the, the feeling, the unique feeling and responsibility that comes with being the first. So it was a couple of years ago that I experienced an alarming wake-up call about the urgency of decoding how I show up, how I present myself to the outside world. So before this alarming wake-up call, I was trying to conceal myself, my true self, being a black woman. I was trying to kind of adapt my behavior, fit the mold, meet people's expectations. But today, I'm standing in front of you indeed as the co-founder of the first and only black, oh sorry, the Dutch television and film production company led by two women of color. Thank you. <laughs> so I have to go back to 2003, where I really felt invisible on television and on the big screen. I feel really unrepresented. So together with my high school friends, we started writing our own stories, just for the desire to be represented. So it was a journey of almost 14 years. And together with balancing a corporate job, I managed to transform one of those ideas into a feature film into 2017. And my motivation was to make that predominantly white screen a little bit more diverse. So as a female producer, I find myself as the only representative in a, in a room very often. And reflecting on that, that role, that role comes with a lot of weight. So just imagine having two backpacks, one backpack weighing 20 kilos, and that one is on your right shoulder. And that backpack is labeled, you better do an outstanding job, because you are reflecting or representing an entire group. And on my left shoulder, you have another backpack, not a 20 kilos weighing you down. And that backpack is labeled, you better not mess up, because your failures might reflect on those that look like you. So it is an important role that we have to carry. So when you are the first and the only in a field, you think, oh my god, people are watching. You feel like always on edge. You feel like the pressure of performing. And that is also the pressure that I felt when I entered the TV and film industry. Together with receiving some challenging comments like, Shanine, we love that film idea, but we don't want to produce it with you. You can be an, an advisor. Or, Shanine, the next movie we're doing together, we need more white characters, because it becomes more relatable. Or, your TV series idea has a lot of black characters. We therefore don't think it will get high ratings. Or this one, my jaw still drops, when somebody used the N-word to describe particular characters in a film that I was pitching. So I've heard all those excuses, I've navigated all the biases, I've been confronted with all the stereotypes. So I, I see you all watching and thinking, Shanine, why in the hell are you still in this industry? Why well, I am in this industry? Because representation matters on a true, deep human level.
But I was also thinking, there's still a lack of representation. And that was just proven by a study that was shared by the Dutch Ministry of Education, Culture, and Science. So the study that they did and the report that came out, it's called, You Cannot Be What You Cannot See. And there's a lot in there that is not a surprise to me, but just to call out two facts. So when you think about fiction and when you think about main characters, only 14% of main characters are people of color. So when you think of the Dutch society, that doesn't add up, right? The diversity of the Dutch society is much more than that. So we're underrepresented. But also if you think of actors of color, actors of color get 40%, four zero less job opportunities than their white colleagues. So there's still a lot we need to do. But when it comes to representation, representation is not only important to those who see themselves features on the big screen. Representation should matter and matters to everybody. So just think about Black Panther, for example. So when I saw Black Panther in the cinema, oh, I got goosebumps all over. I was so proud of that movie. And that movie was an important milestone to the black community. But not only to the black community, because with that movie, they showed Hollywood, they showed the world that a movie with predominantly black characters can be a box office hit. So Black Panther, the first one, did $1.3 billion. So when it comes to representation, we are evolving, especially in my family, across my three generations. So my mom, she gave me particular codes and experiences. So she said to me, she instilled the belief in me, Shanin, you need to work twice as hard to be successful. But if you work hard, it will get recognized. She said, don't go and build your own table, just be grateful for the seat that was offered to you. She said, don't show too much vulnerability, just be a strong black woman. And don't go and shine too bright. And I understand that, right? Those were for her survival, a survival mechanism. Those were not codes or experience to help us thrive, but just merely how to survive. So my generation, we're trying to work smarter, not harder. We're trying to we will let nobody dim our light. Instead, we take the light and stand on the red carpet. And we're building, <laughs> yes. And we're building our own table, and sometimes we're building multiple tables. And we're trying to reprogram, though you cannot be what you cannot see, because that is uh, exposed to, limit, to too, much, too many limits. So when it comes to the next generation, my daughter, so Sora Lisa is her name, she's five years old. So that next generation, she's taking inspiration from her mother's entrepreneurship. And she is confidently aware of her self-worth. And she's also looking forward to being on stage and performing. And for her, I want to shift the code to, you are, so therefore you can be. So every morning when we wake up, we say our affirmations. I'm loved, I'm unique. I can make mistakes, and if I can dream it, I can do it. And I intentionally show her new experiences. I intentionally show her what mommy is doing and why she's doing what I'm doing. But it is still difficult, right, to crack that code for the next generation, especially at times like last week with the elections, the future is looking really bleak. So it was the death of George Floyd indeed that was my alarming wake-up call. Just that unfair biases fueled with inadequate representation. So that and what is happening now is just fueling me to make sure that we have more opportunities for underrepresented groups. Because we all love watch television, or maybe now more on demand, but we all love watching series and, 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 and TV. So that's why I'm using media as a platform to reach as many people as possible to really normalize diverse portrayals. So I hope we can move beyond the why representation is important. I want to get into action. I want to positively change this industry and beyond. And I, I need all of you. So I have three things that we can all do. So the first thing is, we need to move past that one-shot opportunity strategy. Often when a first or an other does a particular project and it fails, it's not only that project that is deemed unsuccessful, but many others, the door closes for many others and first after that. And that shouldn't be the case. So I'm asking the Dutch Broadcasting and I'm asking the Dutch National Film Fund to really commit to funding and producing more projects that are an 
accurate representation of Dutch society. And that one-shot opportunity that needs to move also beyond this industry. So when you have your first female CEO, or you have your first black woman on a board, or you have your first prime minister with a disability and it doesn't work out for any reason, don't go and shut the door for the second or the third or the fourth. And the other thing that we can do together is that when somebody is the only one in a room or the first, acknowledge it. See her, see him, see that person, because that role comes with challenges that are more nuanced. So we need more allies to create a safe space, to make sure that we can be vulnerable and that we can be ourselves. So if you didn't raise your hand in the beginning, and I saw many people raising their hand, but still, if you didn't raise your hand, become our ally. So you can become our confidant. So if somebody shares a story with you that you're unfamiliar with, listen, be curious, ask questions, and say to that person, if you ever need me, I can be there for you, even when I'm busy. Or you can become our amplifier. So an amplifier is somebody that, if somebody from an underrepresented group says something which is a great idea, repeat it, agree with it, and give that person their credit. Or you can become our schooler. So investigate, listen, read, educate yourself. It is important. Listen to podcasts of underrepresented group. Become a member of a diversity and inclusion network. It is important. And then the third thing, don't label a TV series or a film based on its cast. We are here to tell stories to any audience that wants to look at that. So next time when you're on Videoland, Prime, Netflix, don't go to your, your normal or your normal genres or uh, your normal films that you want to see. Broaden your horizon. You will be surprised what is out there. So I'm asking everybody here, to join me to really make sure that we have enough opportunities and that it's not a scarce, scarce commodity but an abundance resource for all. I'm asking you to genuinely hold the door open for others so that we don't have rooms with onlys anymore, so that we lighten that 20 kilo, 40 kilo backpack. And I'm asking you to yeah, I want to retransform that code. I want to change it to another code. And I would like you to repeat it to yourself. And the new code is, I can be what I cannot see, as I am me. I want you to embrace that new code. I want you to lift that new code. And I want you to pass it on. Thank you very much. <laughs>